These quotes are all from Daniel Berrigan. He says, I know that prophetic vision is not popular today in some spiritual circles, but our task is not to be popular or to be seen as having an impact, but to speak the deepest truths we know. We need to live our lives in accord with the deepest truths we know, even if doing so does not produce immediate results in the world. The good is to be done because it is good, not because it goes somewhere. See, so don't, you know, gear it, well, I'm ineffective. He said, you do the good because it's good. If it doesn't go anywhere in your lifetime, it's not, you know, it's interesting. You know, all the women who first vote, worked for the vote never voted. But today women vote, you know. So it's, it's not so that you have to see results. See, I think today we're, we're tempted, well, it's, it's not going anywhere. He said, hey, do it because it's good. It's good. You're doing the right thing. And, and you know, um, patience with God. Then he says, I draw from the prophets a very strong bias in favor of the victim and a very strong judgment of evil structures and those who run against them. The prophets in Christ talk about God, about the God who stand at the bottom with the victims, with the widows and orphans, and the witnesses to, with them in the world. From this terrifying vintage point, which is like the bottom of the dry well that Jeremiah was thrown into. So he's in on the, the prophet Jeremiah was thrown into a well, so he's down there helpless and so on. Life goes in my sense. Sometimes that's what prophecy is going to feel like. You're going to be one, or it's just, as Gil Bailey used to say, you're going to be unanimity minus one. Ex expect some loneliness as a prophet. Okay. Then he says, the best way to be hopeful is to do hopeful things. I love this next one. He says, how can those who honor themselves allow others to be dishonored? You know, I'll tell you a story about Berrigan. You know, when he was already, his health wasn't very good, and they did their last act of disobedience. They burned some draft files and so on. Or no, pardon me, when they did the, the coal, when they put it into a plowshare, when they stripped the top off of a nuclear weapon, and they, they bent it into a plowshare, you know, turn your swords into plowshares. Well, he was supposed to get about 15 years in prison for that. And they went to trial. They would never take lawyers. They would just say, well, we're guilty. Here we are. We're guilty. Um, and so the judge said, well, you had to get a lawyer. And he says, no, no, we're just, we're guilty. So um, so the judge called a recess, and then there, there was, there was a, a sentencing date. So, in fact, I wish I'd brought it in, but I wouldn't be time to read it. But he, find John Deere's book on Daniel Berrigan and read... When, when the judge says, before I sentence you, do you have anything to say? So Berger can say, yeah, I have something to say. And read that speech. It's a masterpiece. And he goes this way. He says, you know, he said, Your Honor, he says, I grew up in a Catholic family. Immigrant, poor. He said, um, we were respectful. He said, we're respectful of the country, reflect, respectful of authority. He said, I was taught to stand up and say good morning to the teacher and so on. He says, and then I joined the Jesuits at 18. He says, and the Jesuits deepened that. He said, I was taught. He said, um, to respect country, to respect laws. He said, that's my mother and father. They live for that. And he said, then I became a Jesuit priest. He said, and then Vietnam started the war. He said, at a certain point, he said, um, we were killing children. He said, we probably killed 80,000 people in North Vietnam. And he says, and we were burning paper with napalm. He said, you were burning children. And he says, um, uh, we were just burning paper. And, and then he says, you know, he said, Your Honor, I'm a priest. He said, and I would like to be doing, doing anything except what I'm doing. He said, I hate prison. He said, it's terrible. And I might die there. He said, I'd like to be baptizing people and officiating at marriages and preaching on a Sunday. He said, that's what I'd really like to be doing. He said, but I can't. They're still doing the Vietnam War. He said, while this war is going on and we're killing people in the name of this country, he said, now I'm supposed to put my heart, my, my heart on, my hand on my heart every time the flag goes up. He said, I can't do it. I can't do it. He said, I wish I could. I can't. He said, because right now he says, I want, I'd like to be doing anything except what I'm doing, but right now I can only have one message. We have to stop this killing. We just have to stop the killing. You know what the judge did? He said, um, I came here today to sentence you to 11 years in prison. He said, but uh, I can see there's no malice in you. I'm releasing you. And so he just, little speechy, 
convinced the judge, and he got out of 11 years of, of prison. Okay. Uh, but the speech is very powerful. Notice there isn't any anger. Um, there's no judging people. He just said, like, uh, you know, he, he was also the champion of sound bites. You know, uh, him and his brother, Philip. Philip was a little rougher. Philip, you know, Philip wasn't as, as gentle as Daniel and so on. Philip was also, they were very different. They were brothers, but Philip was a big, tough, six foot four, and had been in the military and so on, and he was tough. And Daniel was the kind of the runt of the litter. He was the poet, a small guy and so on, fragile health and so on. Um, and so uh, during the Vietnam War, Daniel would coin these expressions. So he was, him and Philip, they, they were approaching the U.S. bishops that, they were saying, you have to speak out against these bombings. You have to speak out against the napalm, you know. And they wouldn't. So Barry said sarcastically, said, you know, said the irony is, Roman Catholic bishops said, if they'd have been dropping condoms, the bishops would have spoken out against it. <laughs> Which is true. Said, but the irony is, they were killing people. Well, that's different. But it's really true. But the same he told the judge, he says, we, we are napalming. They, 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 they always burn the draft palms the draft cards with napalm, you know, as a symbol. He said, uh, we're burning paper, and this country is burning children. He said, and we're going to, you're putting us in prison, and we're supposed to put our head, hands on our hearts every time the American flag is raised. I can't do it. Can't do it. The judge liked what he said. The judge said, I came here today to sentence you to 11 years in prison. He said, I got written down here. He said, but I'm releasing you. A couple of more little quotes, and then uh, we're done. But... Uh, he says, the, the, the saints were right. Their best moments were on the run, in jail, at the edge of social acceptability. That's true. Then, the question is how to love one's enemy even while one's life stands in opposition to him. See, that's the key thing. You've got to love the people you're going against. He said, that's hard to do. He said, that's the real question. How do you continue loving? You know, you know a little story from Larry. Rosebow. He said he was in solitary confinement in a prison outside of Milwaukee for some months. And he said it was the most depressing time in my life. And he said, uh, he said, in, in one bright moment, he said, made it all worthwhile. He said, one Sunday morning, he said he was in the hole in prison. And he said, a guard came in, brought me my breakfast. And the guard says, Father, he said, I'd like to go to confession to you. He said, that's the kind of priest I want to go. He said, it made those years in prison worthwhile. Okay. Then he says, um, I like this next one. The payment for birth is blood. The cost of rebirth can't be cheap. So when a baby's born, the mother going to bleed. He says, if we're going to give birth to justice, um, our own blood has to go there. And he says, to, and then finally he says, the prayers of the church will prevail against all principalities. He also had a great faith in prayer. 